Hello, Fedora friends out in YouTube land. Uh, let's talk about using Fedora Bootsy and GitOps. And we titled this for noobs because I'm a noob, right? And uh, I know a lot of us like who have the sysadmin background, like we're super confident on, you know, basic Git stuff, right? Like, you know, clone, pull, push, commit, all of these types of things. Um, but what we want to do is like look at how do we use Git to like automate complete uh, operating system lifecycle. So how do we take uh, Fedora Bootsy images and like auto rebuild, push, and like really just automate all of the lifecycle needs, right? And drive the whole thing from Git. So Git actually becomes how we drive the operating system. So pretty cool. Um, I, I, again, have a sysadmin background. I am a noob in this stuff, so who better than to teach it than me? Um, and I'll I'll get into kind of kind of more of the this is going to be like a teaching like how to do it video, and uh, we've got a lot of examples to get into, and then I'll show you at the end kind of what's happened here in like my home network, and uh, I've been doing this for almost four, or a little over four months now. And so we'll kind of look at the results. By the way, this is kind of the second video in the series. I'll link to the first one down below. That one was how do you, if you have an existing Fedora box, how do you take it and move it into a Bootsy image? And this one kind of starts off, okay, great. You've deployed a Bootsy image. Now what? Right. And so that's, that's uh, what we're going to look at today. Um, I guess I should, I don't know. If, in case you haven't read it now, my name's Ben. I'm a Red Hatter, and uh, I work in the product management side and eat, sleep, and breathe Bootsy because it's awesome. So, really quick, if uh, you're new here and haven't heard of Bootsy, um, one, go watch the last video. It'll explain more in depth. But just to to fill you in and get you up to speed. Uh, everybody knows Linux containers as a way to build, deploy, and ship um, applications, right? Um, it gives us a, kind of a high-level framework, if you will, to do kind of all of these things in the boxes, right? We can define an app. We can package it. It's a way to ship and deliver with common infrastructure for applications. And Boot C uh, takes everything that we know and love from containers and lets us apply that to operating systems, um, and so it's actually, you, I mean, the project stands for boot container. And so literally the container image has a kernel in it and you deploy it. And so it can boot on metal, VM, cloud instance, really whatever you're targeting. Um, and then you treat your operating system like, like a container. Um, and Again, we'll get into some reasons on why that's cool, but uh, let's first take a step back and talk a little bit about like from the GitOps perspective here. Um, so I think if a lot of us think about this from an operating system, we think infrastructure is code, right? Like uh, you think, oh yeah, of course, that makes sense. I do that via Puppet or Ansible. And that is totally valid. That's a really, really good way um, to do this. And I think, uh, let me map out kind of the differences of the way I see this coming together. Uh, it's a really common practice to, to just start with a golden image. Like, like this is what people, you know, ship, what we make, what we release. And that's normally the starting point. Maybe you version that quarterly or something. Um, and then what happens is when you, when you spin that up, when you provision it, uh, normally, uh, it could be scripts, it could be cloud init, it could be some really complex provisioning system, or it could just be simple Ansible, or maybe you have an Ansible automation platform, or like PE, from Puppet Enterprise side. Something is going to transform the state of that base image into the end state that you need to actually do the work that, that, that you're deploying that system for, right? And, you know, again, this varies just depending on your use case and environment and what you need to accomplish. Um, and then after your box is like ready for action, what happens is over the life of that system, uh, we're going to get OS updates. We're going to change state around 
like if you're doing puppet ansible that stuff is gonna gonna change and evolve what it's running on the system you know the apps you deploy are going to change and modify over time and basically the box is going to go through like a whole bunch of changes um uh over its life and that is often kind of where things need need some attention need some love we got to put some oil in the gears um and that's you know this is this is the life that we know on this side of the house on on just uh deploying and maintaining systems right and okay great so that's how we do it why does that matter well this is um i love this drawing that kelsey made think of think of like in in the corporate side for a minute you normally have multiple stakeholders right like this example shows an app owner and an os owner in real world though you'll have like a network guy the security team a middleware team like you could have like 10 stakeholders on one system or one environment or set of apps like it gets really really complicated everybody owns their own piece and then they kind of throw it over the wall to assemble now obviously uh, a lot of companies um they take great care in like like whatever the top tier system that like runs their business and they'll often have you know like a, a serious uh like itil style progression and and you know slow carefully promote updates through it but they'll do that in like the one area that's like the highest investment level and typically a lot of other things are just kind of patch and pray or best effort right and you know you assume that the the costs of breaks are low enough to where it's fine and we'll just deal with it as it happens. And normally that's cause that's good enough. And again, that's what we've always done. It's what we know. Uh, but containers changed a lot of this right on the application side, because now the cost is way, way cheaper to build the exact artifact that gets deployed into production. And we can, we can build it, we can test it, we can automate it. And you get the exact same artifact on the left side of the wall as on the right side when it goes to production. Now we can do this with total, uh, like complete up and down stacks of operating systems, which again was technically possible before, but the level of effort required was so high to where it's, it's not really that common. Uh, so let's walk through what, what this can look like. It doesn't have to look like this, but if we remember the other uh, three slides ago where we looked at the golden base image here's what we're going to do here um, the center of gravity for boot c is a container file you may know it as a docker file same thing that is the instruction for what goes into your image right and then within that you know we're going to pull things like files it could be configs yes you may run ansible and the you know may call that from a file really whatever you want just you can put whatever in there and we're going to version modify that with git and yeah, there can be more complicated things where you actually pull uh, applications or, or things from other artifacts like Maven or, or whatever else. I'm not, just kind of simplifying to get this all, you know, <laughs> get this all fit. Like if you need to follow a different path, like go, go expand upon this, right? Um, but the idea is we're going to version everything in Git. And then we're going to build and test. Um, in today's talk, we're just going to talk about building. Um, but as a container, you can run these images as a container. And there's a huge amount of testing that you can do just as a container image. Like, yes, it's not complete end to end. It's not completely running the kernel inside the image when you run a Bootsy image as a container. But let's say you, you have like a primary workload in that container. I can fire up and smoke test every single release and verify that any of the user space libraries or any changes that go in at that level don't impede that main workload. And I can do that in like seconds, which is amazing. Again, that's extremely difficult to do in a non Bootsy environment. And then of course we can promote that image to a container registry, we can promote it via tags, like whatever process you want and then deploy it to your systems. Um, okay, so let's dive right in, getting back into the uh, the house of, sorry, my eyes are completely dry. So if you see me rubbing them, that's why wearing contacts sucks. Okay, um, okay, 
let's talk about GitHub. So hopefully, I, I imagine most people watching this have a GitHub account. If you don't, go get one. They're free. It's awesome. You'll love it. Um, once you have that, if you want to clone this repo, this is just something I slapped together. So all of the configs that we're going to walk through here are just in one easy place for you to grab. So you're not trying to like copy copy these slides. That that would be that would make me crazy. Why would anybody else want to? So go go grab that. And then go ahead and make a new repo for the image you're going to be building. Um, maybe you already have one. We'll just go ahead and take all the content you used and move it and version it in that repo, and we'll get going. Um, yeah, go ahead and add and commit those changes. And here is the magic. All the magic, I think, is like GitHub Actions. And basically, uh, I'm going to walk through this file. This is a really simple workflow that you can take and modify on your own. And uh, what this is going to do is you can you can see the like on and then schedule. So we're going to take a cron file right now. This says, hey, every Friday at midnight, build this build this image. And then right below it, it says, anytime you push to main, go ahead and build it. So th this is the simplest flow ever. And you may want to come up with something more custom, or you may want to want to do uh, builds on, you know, a different workflow. We're really do, do whatever works for you. But as a, just like a baseline, this, uh, what this does is anytime you send a change uh, to Git for your system, it'll rebuild it. And then you'll automatically pick up uh, security updates uh, once a week in case you're not making changes and building it. And then your system just is autopilot, right? Which is amazing. Okay, from there, if we go down under jobs, we can see the name, we just call it build. Uh, Ubuntu latest is the default Linux runners and GitHub. You can, of course, do third party stuff. We're actually going to look at that in the next example to where what if you want all this to work on prem? So uh, but yeah, you can absolutely use custom runners uh, if that's interesting, but everything we're going to show here works fine on these. Um, set a name for your image and a registry you want to use. You can obviously use the GitHub one. Uh, you may want to use Quay or maybe you have one uh, like on-prem, like I run one on my house, right? So that's, that's the one I target. Um, but that's definitely something you want to set per re repository, you know, per workflow that you're doing with, with Bootsy. Uh, and then let's just walk through the steps. So first thing we're going to check out a repo, right? So just clones the repo into the, into the runner. And then down here, you can see the steps to build your image, right? It, and we're using the Red Hat actions. Um, and in here, you can see it just variables that are going to take from up above and, we're going to grab the image name, the tags. Oh yeah, this is worth explaining as just a simple, again, baseline, good starting point. Uh, we'll, we'll give it latest. So whichever one we're building is always gonna be the newest, latest version. And then we'll also uh, put the, the SHA, the last uh, GitHub commit as a tag. And that way, as we're going back through our repo, if we ever need to look at the history and go to a previous version, we can just snatch that right out of the registry. It's awesome. And then, of course, we're going to point to a container file that is actually has the instructions that we're going to build in our image. Okay, so let's go further down. It wouldn't fit on one slide. Um, this gray section is a, a workaround to an issue to if you're offing in a registry and then you switch to a different uh, registry, say you need to pull from one and push to another, you may need to drop this fix in. So if you, if you do run into, to an issue with that, just copy and paste this block in, it'll work around the current limitation. Don't worry too much about it. It'll get fixed eventually, but probably worth just providing that in case you hit it. Um, you can see the next one here is going to log into a container registry. I'm not really going to walk uh, through this, but you will see, you know, we'll hit the registry you want to use, and then we'll put uh, a username and password. Um, definitely use uh, GitHub secrets, uh, you know, for like usernames and passwords. Otherwise, it will just show up in the in the log uh, that you use. So definitely take advantage of that. Uh, and then you can see it's going to do the push as the final step. And it, again, uses all the um, basically all the variables that we filled out before. So 
you can see this is going to just build the image, log into the registry, push it. Couldn't be any, couldn't be any simpler. Um, okay, but let's say maybe you want something on on site with you. Maybe you're disconnected. Maybe you want to do this a bunch, so you want it really local and fast. That was the situation I found myself in. Uh, I guess for a couple reasons. One, I didn't want to have to think about um, what's secure, what's not. <laughs> like, am I am I going to share something and not make it private and regret it later? I didn't, I didn't want to worry about that. So I just stood up um, a Git server in my house. Uh, Git T is one that friends at work use. So I thought, hey, I'll use that too. Um, here I have a Quadlet file. So if you do want to spin one of these up on site, I mean, you can literally just take this file, drop it into the path at the top Etsy container system, the Git T dot container, and it will do the thing. Uh, there's really only one configuration step um, you need to make, uh, and that's cause the port is map the SSH port is mapped and there's a little like first boot wizard to set this up. You can set it there or afterwards you can apply it to that configuration file, which the file persists. So just do the change once and you're done. And now all the URLs, uh, you know, like when you create a new project and go clone it, it will take care of the port for you. So you can just paste that in without ever worrying about it. And now you literally have like an on-prem uh, Git environment. How is that for an easy install? Like you literally just drop that Quadlet in. Um, I, I guess I did leave the systemd commands. If you're new to Quadlets, you'll just do a system control daemon reload that tells systemd that our units have changed. And then from there you type system control start git t and boom, you're off to the races. Uh, all right. Next step, since we're running on-prem, like on one of your systems, we'll, we'll actually need to set up a runner. And we will, the little agent for this is just a container and it can run on the same host as the Git T server, as long as you have resources and it really presumably doesn't need a whole lot of resources. So it's probably uh, for most people, if you're new here and just wanna kick the tires, just run on the same box. If you have another one, feel free. Um, but again, here's the quadlet for the agent we're going to run. You will need to get like the get to URL and drop the token for your instance. Uh, that's all super easy to do. Uh, and then that agent will run. There's one other config file. And what I've done for this, this gets, uh, if I back up, you can see the first volume line is gonna pull the config file.yaml. So that's what this is, that config file YAML. Yes, these are all in that Git uh, repo from a couple slides ago. And what this is gonna do is pull a container that I build and maintain. You're welcome to use your own. All this does is take the upstream build a image and then add like Node.js and Git and just common things, curl, just stuff like that that uh, Git T will use. Um, oh, it is also Podman. I can't remember if I said that. Um, that's it. Um, it will let two jobs run at once. If you want to run more or less, change that as needed. Uh, and then the rest just kind of, you will need to loosen, uh, some of the SE Linux stuff and, uh, you need to mount the Podman socket into, into there. So make sure that the Podman service is running on your host. Boom, you're done. Now, uh, just kind of a fun thought is, uh, a lot of people use runners on dedicated VMs or different bare metal systems. So if we think about boot C, right, we're deploying the whole OS. If you want to run a dedicated runner system, it's as easy as this container file here. You just from the base image and then copy over really all those files we just looked at, like the, the runner quadlet and that config YAML. Just copy those to the correct place in Etsy and start the Podman sock, uh, update timer to auto update that container and start the socket, build a container, install it. I mean, you're good. You can deploy it whenever, wherever you, you need and want. So uh, a little bit of inception right there. I hope I explained that well. If I confuse you, I don't know, write a comment and we'll help. Uh, okay. Now. So we've walked, so let me, let me just pause for a second. So we've taken a look at 
um, okay, you've built a system using Bootsy, you've gone through the container image. Um, the next step is like, now what? How do I update the system? So we've talked about you can commit the container file, everything that goes into your image, you can push that to, uh, to GitHub. You can make an on-prem git t like we just walked through and do the same thing there. The same workflow file is gonna work um, in git t as it does in GitHub and will automatically just rebuild your system and push it to the registry. And as long as your system is pointed to that same location, it will just auto update hands-free and you don't have to do anything. So uh, let's talk a little bit. I, like I said, I mentioned earlier, I did this for four months uh, here at my house. Uh, I started with my little home server. I say little, but um, this is like the most important system to me here. Like it has my wedding photos on it. Like we, you know, a bunch of media and just like, I, we use it for a ton of stuff. So like it, it's the most important like computer in the house. So it, it really matters. Um, and that's, again, I run get T exactly like I literally copied the, the, uh, the quadlets into these slides off my box. Um, and I was using this just for, I have got a couple of like little nooks that I test stuff on. Um, and that was, that was kind of my foray in it. And yes, uh, Bootsy is on the server. So Git T is doing the build for the server right there. Um, that all works great. Next, I added my Raspberry Pi, which uh, there's like blog posts for all these that we'll, we'll link in the description if anybody wants to, to dive deeper in. Then from there, I got a new desktop. You know, there's also a blog post for this. Uh, this actually the system I'm talking on right now is a boot C system and it's super powerful. So I moved my runner over here. So now container builds are like, they're stupid fast. It's awesome. Even for the raspberry Pi, which does the, uh, arm emulation, uh, which is awesome. So again, the runner is just a container so I can move it or have multiples crazy easy. Uh, and then I moved my work laptop over to the setup as well. So like, here's the takeaways. Um, I've got six boxes that are just set to like autopilot, right? All of them are maintained by Git. Um, updates apply weekly. I don't do, sh I don't do anything. Like they just freaking go. And you know, if we think back, we've like always had this vision of like you define a system and you, you set it on a, on a path in a direction and like it just goes. The, this, this is, this is the way to, to, to do that. It's amazing. Uh, three of these systems are again, what I call like super important, super critical, um, you know, to like work and family life. The rest are just kind of throwaway play systems. But um, I've been doing this uh, through the Fedora 41 upgrade uh, again, and and really no major issues or problems. Like it, it it's awesome. All right, so a little bit of a post mortem here on what it's been like and the good and bad. So again, I I feel like I'm living in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and and you saw those Git workflows. They're not complicated. It literally is just build this every week and push it out. Um, if if you're a uh, a builder persona, and I and I say that as somebody who really cares about like the package content that ends up on your on your end system, and you like you you care deeply about that. A lot of our customers in the rel side are. I would put them in that builder bucket. The the opposite of that is like a, a consumer persona where, you know, when you go to a cloud provider, you spin up the base image that's there and you, you know how to get from that to what you need. Um, I think if you're, if you're more on the consumer side, you should definitely check out the Fedora atomic desktops. And, and, and if you want to deploy desktop, uh, though, or like, uh, maybe some of the core OS stuff on the server side, those are built for you. And then Fedora Boot C is a core underlying technology for those. Uh, but also, uh, it's awesome if you're like a builder persona to use Boot C to just build anything that you need just using like regular container files. Okay, anyway, so this is this is the way. All right. Uh, interesting thing is like this stuff scales because I barely 
had to do any work to to bring on new systems i again i actually have like i don't know i think it's up to nine or eleven uh different images that are built on a regular basis so i can just jump around uh, on testing systems and stuff and like as you add repos and new systems and stuff like the amount of work that you snowball here is like it's like it's so minimal it's amazing um this is oh it's funny i also have like a work like a mac laptop and like every time i get an alert to update something it's like it's such a beating just because i don't deal with that anymore on anything else it just does it for me um okay uh yeah so zero effort that's that's amazing um obviously having an audit trail and a git repo is fantastic um the the next bullet point on a one-to-one -one ratio of image to system was interesting i guess before i went through this exercise i thought to myself that bootsy really only fit or made sense if you have a, like an n is greater than one <laughs> so if like you're deploying you know i i need 10 tomcat servers this will this is for you um once you have the automation in place uh, using this method or another, you know, obviously like any Git or Jenkins or, you know, any, any one of these uh, options is, is appropriate. Um, I do think this makes sense uh, to have a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, may maybe not for a hundred percent of everything, but, uh, but like I said, I use it for my desktop, I use it for my laptop and those images are literally built just for that one system. And it's amazing. Uh, upgrades rock and uh, one thing on the last video I didn't know at the time that uh, we could do on it or like um, interactive installs with uh, with Anaconda and that's always worked it turns out um, if you are deploying like a one-off system where it doesn't make sense or isn't worth the effort to fully automate a kickstart maybe it's like ah, the the partitioning commands maybe you need something very specific to the system and it doesn't make sense to go write those um just pass a kickstart file that only sends os tree container and, and then you know send it to your registry and the image you want to use uh, if you just pass that one line you'll get the regular anaconda spokes to set up users set up disks set up networking etc and it'll just work it's awesome all right so challenges I guess like in the boot C space in general, like getting started, um, kind of figuring out what path you want or doing some OS specific settings in a container file that people haven't done historically is still maybe a little bit more challenging than we'd like long term. Uh, but we've made a huge amount of progress in lowering that. So, I mean, I feel really good about it. If, if I can do this, you can do this, right? So, um, that's one thing where I think I think there's there's some room for improvement, but again, I still think it's really good. Um, th the next one is maybe the biggest thing is there's been a handful of times where I want to change a file on the system. Uh, remember, these systems are immutable, but they do maintain state under var and Etsy. And so, if you want to change a config in Etsy. Well, of course you can just SSH and say, you know, edit the file, save it, and you're good. That's a strong muscle memory pattern to break, but you should break it and you should do that change and drive it all with Git so that you have that log, you know, the change is made. And then if you ever deploy that container or system somewhere else, you have that change, right? Um, so there's a little bit of a, I've caught myself a couple of times saying, starting to make it you know, like oh wait, no don't do that i need to get is the front door so there's a little bit of discipline there um but it, it pays you back because like again as soon as you hit a container build that doesn't work which uh, oh, we'll just go to the next one when fedora 41 switched to dnf5 there was just a small a small change in the comps command but instead of group install it's now got a space in it well, my container file failed to build. I was notified. Um, it took like, I don't know, less than two minutes to figure out what it what I needed to change, make the change, and then it was fine. And I never experienced uh, any kind of interruption once it was deployed, right? Because um, again, we're moving, we're moving everything left, like the cliche says. Um, 
So again, just make yourself like commit, commit to get. Uh, how's that for cheesy? But uh, but seriously, that's um, that's where you get the value here. Um, okay, so lessons learned. I guess for me, being a noob, uh, doing this, the like, I knew the theory was rock solid, uh, like on a whiteboard, like on paper. I knew I knew this was good, but actually doing it, um, succeeding with it, uh, you know, living with it for again, it's been four months or and change, right? Since I've done this, it's way better than I thought it was going to be which is super encouraging. It's why I'm making this video and hope this is interesting to people. Um, I encourage you, if you're on this journey, start simple. Don't try to make uh, like a super complicated, um, you know, pipeline that I've got this, this weird series of promotions that end up with a lot of friction. And what you don't want is work in between the commit and deployment. Um, so I think just start, start simple, uh, is probably the most powerful thing. And then of course, grow and adapt and change as you go. Uh, but that's, that's my opinion. I, I just, as a high level thing, complexity is the enemy. So let's not add any more uh, than, than, than required. Uh, okay. Yeah. And of course the third one is like, as you grow and change and want to, want to make something more complex, go for it. But you know, let's work our way there and not, not start there. Um, obviously the fourth one is just use secrets and get like, this kind of like one-on-one -on -one stuff. Uh, don't just use username and passwords kind of obvious, but, um, you, you will be able other people, if it's a public repo can just go to the actions and just read your credentials. So don't do that. Um, yeah. And I guess that's mostly what I want to cover. I hope this is interesting for people. Um, one thing I didn't talk about is how the client, so once you deploy a system, how the client actually like scrapes the registry and looks for updates, there is a little timer. I think the last presentation went into that, but there is a Bootsy, I think it's called Bootsy fetch updates dot timer running on your system. What I do on mine as part of my container files is I set when that timer is going to go off. Just like I set when I'm going to automatically build my images. So my images build on Friday, and again, this is just in my house, and then my clients update on Saturday, I'm trying to get my hands in the frame. So they build on Friday, they update on Saturday. Uh, and again, I don't think about anything. It's amazing. Uh, and one, one other little uh, key benefit on my desktop system is it forces me to save files, right? I don't leave anything open because this box is just going to come down every Saturday. And a lot of what I do is in browsers. So when I restart them, uh, browsers remember their state and come back. So like, I don't lose anything. It's amazing. And I never, ever, ever, ever want to click update on, on a system again. And as long as I have this workflow, I probably won't. Okay. Uh, I think I beat the drum enough. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you're new to Bootsy, we've got a ton of other presentations, materials, blogs um, that just cover how this stuff works. Uh, there's a bunch of paths. If you want to use Podman Desktop, it's a gorgeous interface to get started with this. Um, if you like Git, and hopefully if you're watching a video that says GitOps in the title, uh, I would say, uh, you know, get a little prototype going. And once it's good enough, switch over to get as soon as you can. I think you'll love it. All right. Thanks for watching everybody. Cheers.